So I have to be honest, a ton came out of nowhere for me and I took a look at it and I thought to myself, why would anybody get into it? Just another layer one solution. And I really dug into it. I started to understand where it is potentially going and why it is going there. So today I want to just kind of go over, not just to talk about price action, because we always talk about price action. We want the numbers to go up, but just about what the actual project is doing to generate revenue, to generate TVL, to generate users. And I think become one of the big stories of the next bull run in 2025. So today we're going to talk about the mini apps. And uh, the first thing's first, which is this. If you want to get started with, with mini apps, which are on Telegram, if you don't know, Telegram is a messaging service app, but I believe it's going to uh, become the next super app with the Telegram app center. So the first thing you have to do is you have to download Telegram, which I put a link right there so you can do that quite easily. And if you want to find out more about Ton and Ton Coin, uh, there is a, a link in the description. One is on uh, my 100% free website, Dan Teaches Crypto, which was a sort of collaboration between me and Guy as we did some research and we kind of uh, both took a look at it. And then also a video where I talk about why I'm DCing a ton every day. Now, to be clear, uh, just as a reminder, I still have 70% of my uh, portfolio revenue uh, in Bitcoin. And for these other different types of projects, it gets more risky, but I decided that uh, the risk is definitely worth the reward here. And I own a plethora of different altcoins. So the whole thing here is this is going to answer the question about tokenomics. Is it centralized? TPS, adoption on-chain analysis and a price outlook? Great. And just so you know, it's not all perfection. Ton has its issues, which we covered in both of those videos. So take a look. But to talk again about the mini apps, again, I believe it's going to be the next super app, just like they have WeChat in China. WeChat actually started off as a messaging service app, just like Telegram is. So right now, and this was just rolled out uh, not too long ago, roughly a couple months ago for mini apps. And just for uh, clarity, you're watching this video on August of 2024. So this is when mini apps were actually rolled out a couple, two, three months ago or so. And you can find all the apps on this uh, link that I put in there, taps underscore bot. And if you think about apps, so the app center, it's just a hub and it has uh, all the different apps that you can actually possibly want. These apps and services enhance the functionality of Telegram. And they're all everything from games, bots, pro productivity tools, social interactions, and so on and so forth. So here's some of the best that I've actually found. And before you get into that, you would probably want to get a wallet. Uh, just so you know, if you're in the United States, just like myself, if you try to uh, use the integrated wallet, uh, it is a custodial wallet, meaning it's not self-custody, meaning you are giving up your keys uh, to Telegram and the open network or ton. Uh, you can download and use it, but if you're in the United States, it doesn't work. I personally use TonKeeper. It is a non-custodial wallet. I have the keys, I control everything. And you can have that uh, as a Chrome extension. You could have it on iOS or Android, cell phones, whatever it is, it's all there for you. Very easy to use, uh, very slick. So what are the mini apps? Well, they're located, of course, in the, in the link we just talked about. There's some advantages and disadvantages. And uh, one of the advantages that, that I found is that all the apps are in one location. And there's no individual app updates. What I mean here in the United States, if you're not familiar, uh, we have uh, Play and Android or Android Play and the uh, Apple App Store. When you download those apps, uh, you have to, of course, search for them just like what they have right here. And then when you want to, if there's something that's wrong with them or you need to update, you need to those, do those individually. Here in Telegram, you just update Telegram and it updates everything because the apps live with inside Telegram. And the big thing also is that it has Web3 functionality, uh, that is ownership, and you can pay for things. And there's actually real world revenue generation. That's real, like I say here, not theoretical. And we'll get to that in a second. The disadvantages are uh, a bit, and we're gonna talk about that at the very end. So stick around. So the first app I found that I liked uh, a lot, a ton, uh, is the AI bot called Briefly. And what's cool about Briefly is it summarizes text, documents, and videos. So I don't know how much time you have in your life, but uh, mine is slowly slipping away. I need as much time as I possibly can. So I found this app and I've been using it so far. Very slick. So if I want to uh, go and, and check out an article, I just post in the Briefly and it gives me a summary. It's just great. And then it, also what it does, which I thought was interesting, is that it can summarize videos. Let's be honest. Some of my videos, maybe I talk a little bit too much. Other people, maybe they talk way too much. So what I did was I took the link of my latest live stream and stuck in it briefly. 
It was right after it got done and it didn't work whatsoever. However, when I did another one, uh, this is from Dr. Mike from Renaissance Periodization, and he just did like a whole like 40 minute overview of some type of exercise science. And when I put that in, it actually gave me the whole list. Now, I think I know why this is, because when you do a live stream, there's only there's, there's so much time when Google has to like categorize it and uh, do some type of trends. So it takes a little bit of time, but with videos that are like, you know, more than a couple hours old, it actually can work and it does that. And you can save yourself a hell of a lot of time just doing that. So briefly would be the one. And of course, all these uh, mini apps I talk about, there is links in the description, which go right to this actual presentation. So you can download those apps and find those quite easily, or you can just do a search function telegram, same thing. Next one is Play Deck. Now I like this one because um, think of it like this way, just like we have uh, the App Center, which has every single app that you can have, Play Deck actually takes all the games and sticks them into one category. And I like that as far as uh, organization. And you can go there to Play Deck Bot. And of course, you can do this in the App Center itself. You can just go to uh, Telegram App Center, click on games, and all the games will come up. But if you go to Play Deck, uh, they have them all for like uh, match three, they have card games, they have sports, gambling, that type of stuff, arcade games. And it just categorizes very easily and you can download them right there. So it's uh, just something to uh, keep in mind if you're uh, just wanting to pass the time or maybe get into something more. And here's another, another tip. A lot of these games, you actually are playing to earn. So uh, just let that uh, run with it as you see fit. Next one is Money Tab. And I like this one because I, you don't know where you're going unless you know where you've been. And it's important to kind of categorize all the different funds that you have out and what kind of payments that you have. Me personally, I have a lot of recurring monthly payments and it's kind of hard to, to say, do I still have that uh, recurring payment? So with Money Tab, you can just put that information in and it will notify you like, hey, just so you know, in a couple of days, you're gonna have to you know, pay for Spotify. Do you really want this? Or for you know, Disney Plus or whatever else it is. So that's something to consider. Also, one thing is that to put this, when you do this actual app, there's a difference between a subscription and an expense. So just make sure you're doing the right one when you use this app. And it's actually quite valuable, makes things a lot easier. Next one is Ton Radar. Now, if you're in the space and you're trying to keep up with everything, it's very difficult. And if you just specifically want to keep up with up to date what's going on with Ton, Ton Radar would be your one. Now, uh, this is something that I think would I find quite valuable. Maybe not you. You're like, I don't really care about Ton. But if you do, and like I said, you're playing those games, those play to earn games, it gives you clues and hints of how to maximize it. So when they do an airdrop, you know, you might be able to be quite valuable there. So uh, again, check that out. That will be uh, Ton Radar. Next one, this is where things get interesting because I, I promised you to talk about revenue generation, where that actually comes from. And the other different types of apps we just talked about, there's ways for it to generate revenue. Of course, as you, as you get into it, there's like, there's upgrades to every app that's out there, right? There's a free version. Some are free, some are not free. Uh, some are free for a while. Some are free for the most part. And then if you want to go to a higher tier, it all depends. But this one's very cool because first of all, it has a real world function. And second of all, I can see where the revenue generation com is coming in on this and other apps. This one is called mobile. It allows you to buy an eSIM for travel, which gives you full access to foreign services without a VPN. Again, this is for travel and when you're at home. It's very easy to use. So again, links in the description, links on the presentation. When you go to it, you click on launch and you can decide what country do you wanna be from. You wanna be from the US, you wanna be from France, Italy, China, Thailand. And what's great about it is that you can pay with Visa, MasterCard, not recommended, wallet pay, or you can use Ton. And that's where a lot of things are coming into. You can pay with ton, which is the token, the open network. And I did, I just tested it out. I clicked on uh, to use ton. I used my ton keeper wallet. I clicked on confirm and send and voila, there it is. And it tells you how to install the eSIM. So it's very easy. You can have a VPN on your phone and uh, do with that as you, as you please. Next one and next couple actually are all about health. Again, these mini apps cover a, a, a broad spectrum of uh, different categories. So this one's called Wellsy, and it uses just the pictures that you take of your food and uses AI to determine what you're eating and the macronutrients. So again, like I said, health is wealth. A uh, healthy person has a thousand wishes, a sick person has only one wish. So I think everything really comes down to nutrition in my personal opinion, and this one worked really well. So I use this example. I had a big chunk of a rotisserie chicken. I was like, I was gonna take a picture. I'm like, this will never work out. So I took a picture, opened up the app, 
And I'll be damned if it didn't nail it. So it says, hey, look at that hearty serving of chicken. And then it tells me the calories, the proteins, carbs, sugar, fats, fiber, total weight, and 300 grams. So it'll tell you what it is. And then if you're big into macronutrients, like, oh, this is what I want to do. Because if you're getting old like me, it's important that you uh, increase your protein intake, try to reduce your, your uh, calories as much as you can, uh, reduce carbs, and then also the big one, reduce sugars, because that is one of the uh, pathways to uh, non-healthy person. So that would be called Wellsing. The next one, gentle breath. And uh, this is just kind of, let's be honest, we're all kind of a little bit stressed in the world. I don't, I have never met anybody who's like, you know, I'm 100% calm 100% of the time. So this one just helps you to just uh, breathe a little bit easier. And uh, it's very simple. You just, this one, download the app and it tells you like, what do you want to do? Do you want to reduce anxiety? You want to fall asleep, focus, control panic, whatever you want to do. And it runs you through some breathing exercises so that you cannot freak the F out. This just helps you in general. I like these apps because I think we could all use them and I like what I see. And then next one, I mean, it's great to be healthy, but how about some, how about making a little, little funds? Well, this one's called Opus Freelance. And if you want to break into the gig economy, or like I said, have a little side hustle, this is the place to make extra money. What's cool about this is that it separates between a freelancer, like I'm trying to, to find somebody to do a specific project or the client itself. So, or excuse me, that was actually re reversed. The client itself, and then it, it will be the one who actually posts these things. And the freelancer will be the one that actually uh, says, hey, I have, I have time or I have the capacity to do this. And they have tons of different jobs. Everything from like making a hand drawing of a vector, a YouTube cover designer, that may or may not be me, uh, draw eight stickers for a sticker pack, uh, draw letters. And there's just a whole host of things that, that you can do with this one. Uh, some of those are coding. Some of those are just, like I said, like, uh, you know, in the gig economy. But check that out if you want to break into. And a lot of different crypto and digital assets uh, type of uh, jobs are posted there. So, again, check that out if they want to do a little side hustle. Next, we have AIIG. And this is an, an AI image generator. Uh, I like this one. It's fast. It's very easy to use. And it's free if you want to do some advanced stuff. Of course, there's options for that. But I, I use this example and I put in, how about this? I'm going to put Donald Trump as a Lego person, you know, the best Lego person of all time. And uh, I just click create. And in 30 seconds, I got this drawing. And uh, I said, okay, well, that's kind of cool. Well, how about if I could have like make him cyberpunk? And what they did is they took, <laughs> they took the background and they made him still Lego with a cyberpunk. So Again, if you're looking for like AI generated images, I know there's a plethora or a bunch of different uh, apps out there, but for this one, works very well, very easy, and uh, a lot of different options for that. This one, Coin Creator, it's, it's fascinating how easy it is to create your own coin, your own meme coin, your own whatever you wanna do with it. And Coin Creator makes it absolutely brain dead easy. So like I said, you can create and mint your own token under 60 seconds. There's the link. And I actually did this. So when you open up the app, you click on create coin. And I, I, I named it the green screen, green screen coin, GSC, the symbol. And you put, uh, you know, how many do you want to mint? I think I put 22 billion or something like that. And uh, just to give it a description. And then you click on start mint. And then you use Tonkeeper, again, the wallet. And the network fee was three cents to do that. So I slid, uh, I slide to uh, confirm and done. And it took about, I wanna say a minute, maybe up to three, I can't remember, but it was very fast, very easy to use. And then when you click on go to coin, it's actually in your wallet, which you can see right here. This is my uh, ton keeper wallet. I got a little ton coin, USDT, stake this stuff. And there's GSC, the green screen coin that I just did. And actually I want to take it a step further and just see if I could actually, you know, give this to some of my subscribers. Now, again, this was a, a worthless token. So I said, hey, this was on uh, August 4th. I said, send me your public address of, on any of your Telegram wallets and I'll send you some coins I just minted. And we did this and I sent them to five people and it went off without a hitch. I thought it was just, just super easy. So if you wanna do something like that, it's available to you. But I, will, I wanna direct your attention to something, the fees. So for the fees for this one, it was 0.06 which the fee is 36 cents. Because at the time of this recording, ton coins between like five and $6, somewhere around there. So it's not much, but what if the price goes to like $100 per coin? I mean, thanks, hopefully that happens. What you have to know about this is that 
these different tokens that are like third party, they're called Jetton, Jetton coins. They're actually built and created on the Ton blockchain. But when you're transferring and moving around Ton coin, there really is no fee. I mean, it's less than a penny. But you can see here that USDT, like Tether, which they integrated with, which I think is awesome, uh, it's seven cents. And then there's another, another coin, which would be not, not coin, is 11 cents. And of course, the one we just took a look at, it was 36 cents. And this was all done roughly at the same time, the same day. So just be aware that these different types of tokens, they do cost a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on uh, the variability and if they are native or not native or jet ton type of token. So just be aware. Next one here is StoneFi. And StoneFi, every, every different ecosystem should have a decentralized exchange. And StoneFi actually does that within a mini app. It's super fast, super easy. There's a link. And I wanted to, to note for one thing. Did you know that in the wallet that is Telegram, whatever Telegram wallet that you have, I have TonKeeper, like I said, like 10 times now. If you click on swap within the wallet, you can swap to say USDT, say to not coin, see to whatever coin that's actually out there. But I want you to notice something that the network fee is, is quite high actually. It was uh, point, 0 0.1362 ton, which equated to about 77 cents. Now, take the decentralized exchange StoneFi, do the exact same thing. You connect your wallet, which would be TonKeeper, you connect it there. And you try the same thing. How about ton for USDT? Again, roughly the same day. I mean, that was the same day, roughly the same time. Cl you click on confirm swap is the exact same amount. I want to go one ton, one ton for USDT. And the network fee was 18 cents. And the loser was actually the wallet itself of the swap function. So just so you know, 77 cents within the wallet, you can cut down your fees drastically by using the decentralized exchange StoneFi. Links in the description. Very easy to do. And then now we come to other parts of this, the ton DNS. This is like, like what I say, like is the unstoppable domain of Telegram or ton. And you can purchase all these different ton domains and go from there. So just like when people say, I mean, this usually doesn't happen. I mean, some do. Okay, what's your wallet? I'm going to send you some crypto. Okay, my wallet is 0x837, blah, 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 right? That doesn't work out too well. Wouldn't it be nice just to say, yeah, send this to dnews.ton. And there's a link right there. And you can do that. How do I do that? Very simple. We click on launch the web app and you go to ton domains and you look for whatever, whatever DNS that you want to, whatever uh, ton designated DNS. I tried for Gary Gensler and uh, unfortunately it's owned by somebody. Uh, you know, Ripple owned them in the court case. Maybe they own their name now. I don't know. So I thought, okay, well, let me just make something up. So I use mamajama.ton. And okay, you got a bid for it. How about five ton coins? Sure, place a bid. I placed a five uh, ton coin bid and voila, in one hour, uh, it was there in Mamma Jamma. Well, I have to be honest with you. I did not actually go through with it. I don't really want Mamma Jamma, but I did buy previously dnews.ton, robswallet.ton and flappybird.ton. And you can find those in your wallet under the collectibles. And just so you know, um, just like every hot wallet out there, uh, self-custodial wallet, you're going to get some spam. And when you see spam like this, just so you know, if you click on that spam, I don't know if these are spam or not. I just don't trust anything. If you click on it and click report spam, they get deleted. So you can try that out and uh, kind of keep your wallet clean. But for me, the next step would be, okay, so I bought dnews.ton and Rob's wallet. Uh, how do I link that to my wallet? Because it doesn't actually happen automatically. So once you uh, buy this, you click on the DNS that you bought, click on link domain, and it says your current address. Obviously, that's my, my wallet, my TonKeeper wallet. And the, and the fee to link the domain to your wallet is a 0 0.002 ton, nothing. So I click confirm, and now it's linked with my wallet. Same thing with Rob's wallet.ton. So now when you're sending uh, any kind of ton or any kind of uh, token that's on the, on the open network, you just type in dnews.ton or robswallet.ton or whatever yours is, tomatocoin.ton, whatever it is. And that, it goes right to it. So it's a very sim it's a much more simpler way to do things within your wallet. And not, not to mention that uh, when the uh, websites go live, now you own your website and it can go from there. And then also get gems. Every ecosystem has an NFT marketplace. Get gems will be the one that uh, I have taken a look at. And there's the link itself. And of course, every kind of 
NFT that's out there. Now, look, I'm not big in NFTs, but I know some people are. And I will just say that it's important to kind of take a look at of what's the up and coming thing. But this essentially uh, could get very risky, but very easy to use, very low cost to mint and move things around. So uh, get gems is the one for the NFT marketplace, just so you know. And then lastly, we'll talk about games. And this is where we start to get into the revenue generation on top of what we just talked about. So there's a game called Catizen. It's a, quite honestly, not my cup of tea, but that, that doesn't really matter. Uh, what I'm here for is to give to you information and what will be the best uh, stuff that I can actually bring to you. And Catizen is one of those games that's on fire. It's got a game that's a lot going on, basically a cat matching game. It's got it, and it's uh, already exceeded 10 million in revenue. And that's in two months. How to do that? Just wait. So it's the fastest growing app to date as of August 8th. And there's a link right there. So you can play it. Like I said, there's a lot of things going on here. I didn't really get into it too much, but it was kind of a little addicting when I got into like, you know, to move things around, get like levels up and stuff like that, which you can see right there. And when I took a look at it, I'm like, you know, because this was actually uh, somebody that actually talked to me and said, hey, you gotta check out Cat is it? And they sent me this, this uh, report from Cointelegraph. Catizen, again, it's surpassed $10 million in revenue. As far as unique active wallets per day, it's got like half a million. It's a lot. And there's a source right there where you can check it out. So the question then is, where does this revenue come from? Because, you know, we're, we're talking about Catizen and, you know, the game itself. We talked about mobile and we talked about all the different mini apps. So where does the revenue come from? Well, you want to go where the eyeballs are. You want to go where the people are. Nobody wants to go to an empty restaurant. They want to go to a place where there's a lot of people, right? Especially if you're a vendor and you're trying to sell things. So just so you know, this was in uh, early 2024. Telegram has 900 million. Actually, it's 950 million. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's at 1 billion people. In comparison, which you're watching this right now on YouTube, YouTube has 2.5 billion people on it all the time, every single day. So that is quite a bit. So then the question is, well, how does that work as far as like revenue? Well, just the same thing as like with this video. I'm sure you saw an ad or maybe you didn't. Maybe you got an ad block. I'm not for sure. But uh, usually ads are a revenue generator. And did you know that they just rolled this out? Every month, 950 million Telegram users generate 1 trillion views in a public broadcast channel. To me, that's where I want to actually put my uh, ads. And the big thing about this is that it says paid with cryptocurrency. It says you can pay for your ad with TUN. I went through this whole process. There was no other place to pay than with TUN. Imagine that. You've got 950 million, 1 trillion views. People are like, I want to be a part of that. And they can only pay in TUN. What does that mean? Well, it means probably that the price is going to go up. And this is what, what I went through. There was no place to pay with Visa or MasterCard or PayPal or anything like that. It was just a ton and that is it. And what's great about this, and I think this is why I wanted to bring to your attention, is we're super early. This stuff just happened in June of 2024. It is August of 2024. Businesses on Telegram, as of June 24, can sell digital goods and services using bots and many apps. As far as like the ads, they just rolled this out within the last month. And of course, if we're talking about revenue, we're talking about digital game assets as far as digital goods and services, including eBooks, online courses, and digitalizing with games. And to give you a prime example, this would be Catizen. And you can see right there, it says claim. I know this is getting a little goofy, but trust me, when you hear about that, they went from zero revenue on the first week to $10 million in revenue on the 10th week. Now they're on the 12th week and they are at $15 million in revenue. You can fake a lot of on-chain analysis. You can fake the voting. You can fake a lot of things. It's extremely difficult to fake revenue that you are getting from transactions from wherever it comes from. Money is money. I can probably create a bot. There's probably something in ChatGPT that I can do to create a bunch of different unique active whatever. But as far as like money, money talks. So again, where does revenue come from? It comes from ads. It comes from digital game assets. And then, of course, uh, when you have these mini apps, you know, you have different things like the VPN. You can pay for it with the ton coin itself. Or the option, of course, people would say is, but Rob, this is an app that you can download in uh, Apple. 
and Android? Are they kind of getting a little upset that they're using a crypto asset? Probably, but what can they do about it? They just lost uh, that nice uh, court case with Fortnite and they've got to be a little bit more lenient now. So there's actually a dual system. In the apps themselves, there's two ways you can pay for it. Sometimes you can pay in ton, sometimes you can pay in like a Jetton, like a different different uh, version of, uh, of the different assets that are on ton. And sometimes they give you the option to, actually a lot of times, they give you the option just to buy stars. And stars are what you purchase within the Apple App Store or the Android App Store, and those are paid in dollars. So you have as much freedom as you want to do you want to pay for that in crypto and digital assets? Do you want to pay for it in dollars? And that's how they tow the line. So the question then is, well, why even play these games? Well, some people are entertained by them. Some people get relaxed. Some people get paid by it. So remember that these games, like say Notcoin and say Hamster Combat, which has 300 million users. Who knows if that translates to a massive amount of token when they do the airdrop. But Notcoin did it and they are in the top 100. As a matter of fact, as of uh, this video, they're at number 60. And they, are, they have a market cap of $1.2 billion, circulating total supply and max supply, all maxed out. So there is nothing that uh, is being held back. So when I take a look at this, I'm like, maybe I should play some games and actually earn something. So lastly, like I promised, the pros and cons. The pros we already talked about, the cons is this. It's new and it's a bad layout. I can't get around that. I've taken a look at WeChat and how they kind of organize things. It's very slick. With this one, for it to be the super app, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Another thing is that we're super early. So the ads that I got are super annoying. They don't even work that well. Uh, my personal opinion, they need to categorize the apps. And the question that I have is like, because on my channel, it's mostly United States uh, residents, about 45%. The rest are Canada, Australia, parts of Europe. But there's not much adoption in the United States. And there is, but not that much. So, you know, is that actually gonna happen? Well, there's two things. First, as far as like the layout, if you're looking for apps, they just put this in where if you go to the Telegram app and you're you know, in the chat section, if you click on search, now there's an apps section and it has everything kind of categorized, which is great. But as far as like adoption, is this, is this really going? Again, on-chain analysis, take it as you will. Daily active addresses, I just took a look between Solana and Ton. And Solana is crushing ton right now. It's almost at 2 million ton has still pretty good, 475,000 daily active users. So it's 25% essentially what the, the daily active address is. Daily transactions, Solana's got 40 million, ton's got 1.1 million. Of course, crushing it, right? And then the fees, of course we want the lowest fees we can. Solana's at 2.2 million, wow. And ton is at $77,000. Not too much, but do we really want high fees? Probably not. And lastly, the TVL. Solana's got 5 billion tons encroaching on the uh, billion dollar mark, but it's still at three quarters of a billion at $755 million. So one thing to keep in mind before we, we sign off, which is this. Solana was launched in March, 2020. And the market cap right now is 60 billion. That's of August, 2024. Ton was launched two years later, two years and three months actually. And the market cap is $15 billion. And that was as of today. Actually, it should be eight, 2024. So if you're looking at it, you're like, well, can Ton catch up to Solana at its current market cap? The question you have to ask yourself, is Solana's market cap gonna stay the same? And me personally, I don't really think it is, but that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it for this one. I appreciate you sticking with me. I know it was a little bit longer. All the links in the description. Thanks so much. And I'll see you on the next one.